South Alabama had a phenomenal year in 2022, and they're looking to build upon that momentum in 2023. Today, we take a look at the top 10 players that are going to help that cause. But first, we have to start with LaDamian Webb. Now, there are a couple of guys you could put at the top of this spot, but LaDamian Webb was a big addition from the transfer portal from Troy. 1,000 yards rushing, 13 touchdowns, 5.1 yards per carry. He is someone who had a big-time impact on this offense. And Major Apple did a great job of getting the talent that was on this roster to compete and play at a high level. And he's going to be able to do that again. This is a group that is very talented, a very explosive offense. And now everybody kind of knows who they are. They're not going to be surprised by what South Alabama does, but they have the talent to repeat what they did last year or even improve upon it. They have a ton of talent coming back. They have the guys necessary, even at quarterback, too, where they can make big plays. It's not going to stop just because they were surprising everybody. This is still a very talented team, a very explosive offense, and they're going to make a lot of big plays again in 2023. And another reason for that is Carter Bradley, the former Toledo transfer. Honestly, that was the best thing for him. After backing up to Quan Finn, decided that he wanted a chance to start transfers to South Alabama and makes the most of his decision, over 3,300 yards, 28 touchdowns. You'd like to see the interceptions go to a little bit at 12 interceptions last year. Not exactly what you want from your quarterback. And that's really, like I said, you can get better by changing some little things. So taking care of the football more, being able to limit those interceptions, that will have a big time impact on what South Alabama wants to do in 2023. This offense has a, a tremendous amount of potential, a group that could be one of the most explosive in college football once again. And like I said, Major Applewhite is a great offensive coordinator, someone who can get the ball downfield, can move the ball quite efficiently, and that's going to be huge for this team. Now we flip over to the defensive side of the ball. Yam Banks could be in the – honestly, these top three guys could all be first. You can make an argument for them. Six interceptions last year, and he was one of the best players in college football, one of the best defenders, and you're going to have to keep an eye on him for the 2024 NFL draft, someone who could have a big time rise once people start paying attention to him. This is the thing with group of five teams is guys like Gam Banks after one good year still don't get the love that they deserve, still don't get the attention that they deserve. At 6'1", 208 pounds, has good size for a safety, someone who could catch the eyes of somebody and scouts that are going to be watching him because you look at, you really need one good year to get everybody's attention. And then after that, it's on... It's on you to just continue that production. And I think that this defense has a lot of talent, could take another step forward to help this group even more. We know what the offense can do, and it's just a matter of the defense. Now, in front of him, Markevious Thomas is a veteran who's been around for quite some time, and he plays that nose tackle position. We've talked about this in the past. You're just not going to get the production, the box score, filling it up that you expect from other positions. Nose tackle is almost a thankless job. And if you're doing what Thomas is doing with five tackles for loss last year, three sacks, I think you're sitting pretty good. You're sitting in a good situation where I don't think you have to worry about a time because you're just in a good spot and you're making plays for everybody else. Now, what that means for you means you're not getting a ton of recognition from the casual fan, but that's okay. You're going to be able to open things up for the linebackers behind you, opening up things for the defensive ends by you as well. So doing his job really well means that, unfortunately, he won't get the recognition that he deserves. Going back to the offense, Devin Voison had a big year, and he's one of those players who could have an even bigger year in 2023. A lot of college fantasy guys really like him and what he can do. And Major Applewhite loves targeting his wide receiver one. And he's done it in the past. He did it last year, and Voison was, was that guy. He could do it again, and teams know what he's capable of. We saw what he did last year, 867 yards, five touchdowns. He's an explosive weapon, and that's not going to stop Major Applewhite from targeting him. That's not going to start stop Carter Bradley from throwing the ball his way. This is someone who can make a lot of big plays for the Jaguars offense, someone who is extremely explosive at times. And with this offense being so talented, you really can't put too much attention his way because if you do you're opening things up for the other playmakers or even the rushing attack and that's not going to bode you well either now we flip over to another voice in Jaden Voison on the defensive side of the ball 
joins Yam Banks in that secondary, another player who had a good year. This secondary is really fun for South Alabama. They have now the other thing I would say is they get a lot of good reps in practice because they are facing one of the most talented receiving groups in the Sun Belt. So you're getting a lot of elite against elite, good against good matchups in practice and that is going to help you when you face other teams it's not going to surprise you when you face a team with good receivers because you've seen that all week in practice you're not going to be worried about what is your defense doing can they handle that pressure you know this defense is ready you know that they're prepared and Jaden Voison is another player that's going to help them with that now one of those other receivers that's helping with that production is Colin Lacey you look at and everybody focusing on Voison, Lacey had a great opportunity to put up some pretty solid numbers, and he did that. You look at South Alabama spread the ball out pretty well, but they targeted their top receivers quite frequently, and that's going to continue in 2023. They're going to get these guys the ball. They will find ways to move the ball downfield, whether it's in quick game, deep balls, intermediate routes, those kind of things. Colin Lacey is another guy to pay attention to. This group coming back really is exciting because I, I think that South Alabama, like I said, last year was kind of that surprise factor where everybody expected them to be below average or just average, and they exceeded expectations. So that surprises a lot of people. This year is not going to be the same. It will not happen the same way. Teams know what they're capable of. They know the personnel that can make them pay. But when you get this much talent returning, it's still tough to slow down this kind of an offense. So then a lot of the pressure goes to the defense. And you have, we talked about guys on the front first level and the third level. Now we look at the second level. Trey Kaiser, a disruptive player off of the edge even. And you look at 11 tackles for loss last year. He is a proven commodity at the second level. Now, what do they have for depth? That's probably the key question here is how do they handle if somebody goes down? I mean, even in this picture, you see Kaiser has a club on. So there's obviously some injury history, not necessarily concerning, but it's something to keep an eye on. If you're able to continue winning at a high level, it's because you have depth and the guys that you have returning, those stars will continue with that play. And if they do go down, someone else takes their place. Now, Speaking of depth, one of the better additions from the transfer portal, in my opinion, was Javon Ivory. Javon Ivory has big play potential. It's just a matter of putting it all together. His time at Memphis was very up and down. You saw him make big plays. There's a number of catches that you can go back and watch that make you say, wow, this guy is, it could be a stud. And he has stud potential. Now you add him to an offense that already has two wide receiver one candidates. That's going to be difficult to stand out in. Say plain and simple, getting catches requires you to get open. And Carter Bradley is good enough where he can just identify who's open, throw them the ball. Now, Javon Ivory brings that extra level of sports center top 10 potential. But when you have two good wide receivers, you don't necessarily have to rely on that as much as Memphis did in his time there. So that's something to keep an eye on as well. And then finally, Jamie Sheriff on the defensive end side of things, he is honestly could be higher on this list, if I'm being honest. He can be a disruptive playmaker for this defense, someone who will help out that secondary by being disruptive on the edge, terrorizing offensive tackles, and making life difficult for the opposing quarterback. South Alabama is honestly in really good hands. I like where this team is headed. I like the potential for a Sunbelt championship. Now you have to take your game to a next level. They have the good core of return, a good foundation to be able to make that happen. And whether or not that does happen remains to be seen. But last year was proof that they are ready for the opportunity. And if they get a chance to do it again, they're probably not going to miss this time.